All right, guys, so let's go ahead and draw a photorealistic red pepper design. Starting out, I'm using a 4,000 pixel by 4,000 pixel 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my color palette, I've got this pre-made, so you can download this for free if you go to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page. You'll find a link to that. It's also down in the description below too. And then for my brushes today, I'm gonna to be using my brand new creator set. This is an all new pack. I uh, haven't talked about it or announced it here on the channel yet, but I did release this on Sunday, sent out an email blast to everyone that's purchased a brush pack from me before on Gumroad, so you might have already seen it there. But this is kind of my go-to set lately. It does all the heavy lifting of the certain styles that I work in, so I absolutely love this thing. This is gonna be what I'm using going forward a lot of times on the YouTube channel. Uh, the purchase of this, you also get a three hour long tutorial. It's absolutely the longest tutorial that I've ever done, kind of a masterclass in Procreate and how to work in some different styles. So definitely check that out. And then I also, along with that brush set, released two more the same day. I've got an animal silhouette stamp pack with 100 different brushes of animals and then also 10 different animal print pattern brushes along with textures. That one comes with a 40 minute tutorial. And then finally my retro cartoon stamp pack where you can make classic looking animation cartoon characters. Goes great with my previous cartoon stamp packs. Uh, but with that, you get 200 brushes. It also comes with some texture files and it comes with an hour long video as well. I'm running a special on all three. Buy two, get one free for the month of May to celebrate my Make Art May drawing challenge. You can find all the details and the links to all those below. So definitely check those out. So to begin here, let's go ahead. I'm gonna use my color blocking brush to start out with. And I'm gonna use that first red color to begin drawing. And the color blocking brush is just that, to block out colors. The reason why I like this one is it has a nice, soft edge to it. So if I zoom in here, you can see there's kind of a blur there and that is on purpose. Uh, so a lot of times when you're trying to, to get a design like this with no lines and no outlines, you end up with some really hard edges and they don't look right. So that's what this is for. And you'll see here, I'm coloring in everything by hand, blocking in the color, so to speak, because if we drag and drop the color with this, you're gonna see, you can see the line edges here because of that softness. So if you're using this, I don't recommend dragging and dropping the color. I recommend blocking it in by hand. Kind of old school, traditional, we're actually coloring and not relying on the app to fill in everything for us with that drag and drop technique. So get all this in here, get it filled in. Make sure that comes to the edges here. I just don't want any of that white that I played around with to, to show up there. All right, now that I've got that, I'm gonna use the arrow here and use warp just to kind of fine tune the shape of this, just to get it exactly where I want it here. Don't want it to be perfectly symmetrical. That's why I didn't use symmetry to draw it, but overall, Want to, to line up pretty well there. All right, now that we've got that, let's go up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna make a new layer and I'm gonna drag and drop this below layer one. And we're gonna use this technique to build out the, uh, the rest of the layers here in the back. So by doing this, what we're gonna do is you're gonna see once these touch, they're gonna pretty much become one piece. But when we go in here, to add the shadows and add the highlights, it's going to help us build those up a lot easier having these separate. All right, now that I've got that one done, let's go ahead and back up to my layers menu and making another new layer here. We'll draw the, the one here on the right hand side, bringing that down and around. Once again, just kind of trying to get that smooth Get that one in there. I'm gonna twist the canvas here a little bit. I like to twist and turn the canvas because you'll see that your arm and the way your hand moves is more comfortable going a certain direction and turning the canvas and twisting it like that will really help you kind of have some comfort in some of those lines and the, the funky way that you're going. All right, back up to the layers menu. 
Another new layer here, we'll drag this down below and just kind of continue up here to the top. Once again, kind of zoom in and twisting. Back to our layers menu, another new layer here. Zooming in again, we'll kind of pull this one in and around. And then finally, one more new layer here, which we'll drag down to the back. So we want this to the very bottom here and we'll pull in another one here across. Just a, a subtle curve here. All right, pulling back out then, you can see what we've got. All right, so that's the basic shape of the pepper. Let's go ahead and get the stem in there. So up to our layers menu, I'm gonna make a new layer, selecting layer five, a new layer on top of there. Oops. And going back up here to my color palette, we'll choose this light green here. Come in and just start to kind of build up the stem here and get the base of the stem right here. And then kind of get this drawn in. I'm going to just roughly kind of block this in to get the overall shape. So you can see with this technique, I'm not using a sketch. So holding down with the eraser, we'll select that same brush that I'm using here. I'm gonna pull out some of that color and then go back in and just re-add. Just getting the overall shape exactly like I want it. All right, I think that looks pretty good. So we've got the overall shape and colors block in for everything. Now it's time to move on to actually doing the shadows and the highlights. So let's work on that next. So to begin here, I'm gonna come up to my layers menu. Let's start with layer two here on the left. We're gonna select that one and I'm gonna make a new layer on top and then I'm gonna tap this and set this as clipping mask. So what this is gonna do is it's going to allow us to color in on this layer and it's only gonna show up on what's colored in here with this. Also, since we have these separate, it's not gonna go over top any of these other layers and that's why it makes it so much simpler to use this technique to get the results that we want. All right, up to my colors palette then. I've got this lighter, color red here, darker than this, but lighter than this. So it's kind of in the middle. So we're gonna use that one first. And then I'm gonna switch over to my soft rendering brush. I've got a few different sizes that are set here, 28%. I'm gonna start out with that. And you're gonna see this builds up very slow. I've got my opacity set to 32%. So this is gonna give us a really rendered look. It's gonna allow us too to have a lot of control over how much we're adding in. So one thing with some of the default brushes on Procreate, like the, the airbrush, that one, it's it builds up so fast and you can't really get these subtle changes in color. That's why I don't like using that and why I made this brush. It just works a lot better for this type of work. Once I've got that done then, I'm gonna come up here and get that darker color and just add in some darker values to what we just did. And you see now, as we do this around the edges, it starts to separate that from the shape that we have here in the front. And that's why we did it on the separate layers like this. All right. Now you're gonna see me work back and forth between the highlights and the shadows. So here, let's go up to our color palette and choose white. And then I'm gonna zoom in here just a little bit so we can see better. Still using that same rendering brush here. I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna go along the edge here and you'll see I had this kind of cut here to where it dips right there. So I'm gonna bring in Highlight here around the top, and then coming back in, holding down on my eraser, so it sets it as the soft rendering brush. I'm gonna pull out, making this a little bit smaller. I'm gonna pull out a little bit of that. 
so it juts back in. And then using the smudge tool, holding down to select that, got my size about 9%. I'm gonna to start to smudge this down. So you can see that starts to taper down there. I'm also gonna build this back up on this side, just like that. All right, moving back here then to, let's just go ahead and use that darker color now. Still with the same brush here. Just gonna start to build up some other shadows to kind of bring home the effect of that. Pull them back down here now. Pull those down. And then I'm just gonna hold down in the background here to select white. We'll bring in some lighter effects down here. Make it a little bit smaller here. All right, looks good. Let's go ahead and move on then to the other one here on the right hand side in the back. So layer three, new layer here. Tap that, set that as clipping mask. Back to my color palette, using that middle red here, up in the size of the brush here. We'll just start brushing on until we see the edges of that layer and kind of use that as our guide. Bringing these around. Oops, I want to remove all that and just use the eraser here to pull out a little bit there. All right. Back up here to the darker color now. Just darken up what we did there a little bit. Making the brush smaller. Pull up a shadow there, all right. Back up to the color palette, we'll choose the white again. And we'll start to get in some highlights here. And as far as with Procreate, I've got my brush pressure sensitivity just set to normal. So the pressure curve is just the default in Procreate. This brush really relies on you getting used to exactly how hard to press and, and what the, the pressure does to the brush and to the results here. All right, so we've got those. Of course, this looks wonky now, really out of place. So let's get started on that one. So back to our layers menu, layer one. We'll make a new layer here. We'll tap this and set this as clipping mask as well. And here I'm gonna start out with the, the highlights across the top so we can build these up. Jumping my brush up to that next one then once I've got that started. Get a highlight there and a highlight over here. And then let's go ahead and start get kind of a nice shine here. We'll build that up just a little bit of a hard press to begin with and then letting up pressure as I move out from that center. We get that kind of radiating glow. Pull up some highlights here and then we'll start in with the shadows then. So back up to my color palette, the lighter of the two shadows here going to start to build up, even going bigger here. Down here in the center. Going smaller now for the bottom here. I'm also going to go smaller here in the center to kind of give a dimple here where those come together. We'll do that here and then also up here at the top. And then using the smudge tool holding down to select it, we'll just kind of smudge this in. So it kind of has a taper going down. And same thing here going back up. All right, back to the brush. Continuing on just to darken up, making it bigger when I want to cover more area. All right, and then we'll go with the darker one now. So back up to the color palette, choosing the darker one here. 
and then just darkening up, darkening up some of those areas that we just worked on. Make it a little bit smaller here and kind of pull this more down in the center. And once again, back to the smudge. Smudge it around just a tad bit. And then I'm gonna select the white again here. Just kind of hit some of these edges again, that in between. Soften up the colors there. Going a little bit bigger here. I'm just barely touching the screen right here. Once I've got that, I'm going to go back to the smudge again and just kind of blend this together. All right. Looks good. Let's go ahead and keep on moving back then. So back up to the layers menu. Let's go ahead and work on, let's see, layer, layer four. We'll do this one here. So we'll tap on layer four, new layer. Tap again, clipping mask, back up to the color palette, the lighter of the two shadow colors. Still using that soft rendering brush. Start to build these up. It's a little bit there and then back to the white to get the highlight in here. And then back here to the color palette with the darker. I'm also going to use the eraser now here just to pull that out a little bit. I don't want it too dark and it was starting to get a little muddy there. All right, so there we go. We've got that one. Layer five now, this one here, we'll tap that new layer on top. Using that in between and setting this layer as clipping mask. Start to build up the shadow here. Going back in with a darker color now. And then back in with the white. You can see this is just kind of a repeat process. It's just using the same technique to build these up. I'm going to use the eraser now and pull just a little bit out here. I don't want it to get too dark in there. All right, moving on to that last one then here in the back, layer six. Another new layer, tapping this one, setting this one as clipping mask as well. Lighter color to begin with. And then back to the darker color. Just so we get that nice separation there. I'm going to make this smaller as well so I can pull in tighter here. And then back up to the color palette to white and we'll hit the highlight there on the edge. All right, so there we go. We got basically our pepper done now. Let's go ahead then and move on to the stem. So back up to our colors palette. I'm gonna use this lighter green color here, the lighter shadow green, the middle one. And then you guessed it, layer seven. We need to tap on that, make a new layer on top. Set that as clipping mask. Still using that soft rendering brush. I'm gonna zoom in here so we can see a little bit better. We'll start to build up the shadows here. Kind of get along the edge where it connects to the pepper first and along this back side. Down underneath this stem here and I'll kind of have that probably kind of curve and overlap up here. Pulling it back in, all right. So there's that. Now to the darker version. Go ahead and darken up some of that that we just did. Especially along that back edge there. Making this smaller. I'm going to kind of pull in some more textures now. Kind of start building up the shape here. Just like this. 
We'll make it even a little bit smaller now to start to pull in some finer lines here. Pulling in this line here for that overlap. And then we can use that smudge brush here just to have control over there. All right, so back up here to the white then. Still using the soft rendering, going with that middle size here. Hitting along the edge. Bringing down the size here. Adding in some more highlights. I think I want to go even smaller with some of these. And then back to the smudge to kind of smudge in some of those. Just so they blend a little bit better. And now that we've got this darkened up too, we can also go back in using that original green color and we can use that to bring in some highlights as well. If we go smaller here, even smaller still, I've got this about 3% now. Bringing those in and then with the smudge, kind of fine tuning those colors. I just want that nice blend to happen. As we build those up, smudging them back in. I'm going to go with the darker color one more time here underneath the bottom. Let's make this look a little bit more natural. And then using the smudge tool again to blend it. All right, and pulling back out. You can see what we're left with. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer at the bottom here. I'm gonna drag and drop black into here. And then I wanna add in just a little bit of black here. I don't wanna add a ton to the pepper itself. This just kind of enhances some of those shadows that we've already got. So with that layer 10 selected and black selected here, I'm just gonna softly kind of bring out some more of these shadows. This I don't do really heavy because I don't want to muddy this up. Layer 9 now, moving over here. Darken up just a tad bit and just repeat this process going around. You can see I'm not doing it everywhere and I'm using this very sparingly and very light. Which layer am I on here? This side. I think honestly that's good for the the red parts I'm gonna do the stem here just a tad bit so we're gonna zoom back in here make the brush a little bit smaller just kind of darken up especially some of these areas here where it touches just darken up some of that and cross the top all right then finally, I just want to hit that one more time with some highlights. So still on that same layer, I'm going to use that green here. Just use some soft fades like we did with the whites here. Oops, didn't get the right color there. Use that middle in-between color here. Or the middle in-between size, sorry, and then just kind of bring out a little bit more of the highlights here to build them up. And then finally back to white. Just to build up some higher contrast highlights. And 
using the smudge tool to blend them in. And pulling back out, you can see what we're left with. Finally then, I'm just gonna make another new layer here. And then I'm gonna sign this guy a little bit too big there and we will be done with today's tutorial so there we go how to draw a photorealistic red pepper design hopefully you guys enjoyed today's tutorial if you did do me a favor make sure you give the video a thumbs up also if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when i post new videos like this one just want to thank you guys for watching if you followed along with this too, I really urge you to share your artwork if you're on Instagram or Twitter. Post it on there and tag me so I can check it out. I love seeing what you guys come up with following along to these tutorials. It's really awesome. So thanks so much. Tag me at BJ Dell. That's what I can be found out on there. And then of course also online, bjdell.com. It is now what May 23rd. There's still seven, eight days left in Make Art May, my month long drawing challenge featuring 31 days of daily drawing prompts. So log on and post your artwork for each day's prompt for your chance to be featured in a video here. And then also for your chance to win a pro draw grip for Apple Pencil, which is what is on my Apple Pencil. That's your chance to win one and get featured. So that's it for me today. Until next time, keep creating.